air layering is an excellent way of obtaining duplicates of our fruit trees. Almost all plants can be propagated this way, although some are more difficult than others and will take more time to develop roots. The air layering process stimulates a stem while it's still attached to the parent plant, making it develop into root tissues. There are several stimuli that have the potential to make a stem develop root cells. The absence of light and a higher level of humidity are two of the most important. The use of rooting hormones can speed up the process, especially in plants that are a bit more difficult to air layer but is usually not essential. Applying a piece of aluminium foil to the stem will block the light and will concentrate humidity in that area. After a few weeks or months, depending on plant type and time of year, the stem will start to develop root bumps. These might even turn into roots if the level of humidity is high enough. This simple method can be used to check if a plant type is a good candidate to air layering and to avoid the use of rooting hormones. Pre-rooting cuttings is another good use of this method, since the cuttings will already have a few roots or root bumps before they are cut. Remember to always leave a couple of leaf nodes between the pre-rooted areas so the cuttings can grow new leaves from those areas in the rooting process. Start by removing a full circle of bark below a leaf node. It's best to use younger branches, one or two years old. The bark will be easier to remove when the sap is flowing. In most areas, the best season for air layering is the spring or when the plants are actively growing. After removing the bark, make sure to scrape the cambium layer, which is located beneath the bark. If you don't remove this layer, the plant will try to regrow the removed vascular tissue, the phloem. If the plant is successful in restoring the phloem, the sugars produced in the upper leaves of the air layered branch will go straight down to be stored. Without the phloem, which was removed with the layer of bark, that sugar energy will be used for root development near the leaf node. The third step is placing a wet rooting medium around the leaf node so the roots can develop. I find it easier to use a container with a lid. Check my video on preparing containers for air layering. The container fits snugly around the branch and it's easy to fill with the rooting medium. Use a light potting medium slightly damp. 
Sphagnum, Pet Moss or Coco Choir are also popular choices. Be sure to wrap the container with kitchen film. This will make sure the medium doesn't dry out before the roots have a chance to develop. You can also use a plastic bag or aluminium foil to hold the rooting medium. So, these are the main steps. Cut below a leaf node. Remove a full ring of bark. Don't leave any bridges. Scrape the cambium layer. Place a damp rooting medium around the area. You can use a plastic bag, aluminium foil or a container. If you use a transparent container, it's easier to check for root growth. When using transparent containers, be sure to cover them with something opaque like aluminium foil. That way the roots can develop fully without interference from the sun and the rooting medium won't dry out. The time needed for roots to develop will vary, depending on the type of plant and the time of year. I like to use the container method because we can forget about the air layer and the roots will still be viable after many months. With experience, you will know how many months are necessary to develop roots for each fruit type. 2-4 to four months are to be expected in most cases, but difficult to root varieties can take a bit more time. Avoid air layering plants that don't grow well in their own roots. In this case, it's better to plant a resistant rootstock and graft the desired variety. These air layers are from a Pluot rootstock. They took almost 6 months to reach this stage. So, remember to be patient with plants that are more difficult to root. These air layers were then later in the season, so the leaves have already fallen. When removing air layers with lots of leaves, be sure to remove most of them, so the small root ball can sustain the new plant. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, subscribe, share and leave a comment to help me make more. Click the bell to receive notifications of new videos.